and welcome. This video is going to be what sold for me on the various platforms that I sell on for the week of March 1st to March 7th. And I'm very happy to report for the first time in a very long time, I actually have three different platforms worth of sales to share with you. Moxie will be screaming at me in the bottom as per usual wanting all the attention. And before I actually get in to doing any of the what sold, I do need to issue a correction from my last what sold video. I, uh, I sold this Woolrich sweater quarter zip thing. And I said that I couldn't remember where I got it from or how much I paid for it because Brett gave it to me. <laughs> and uh, he left this comment on that video and you know it's very gracious about it but i'm so sorry that i forgot that you sent it to me i have gone through and rewatched the video of me unboxing it and put brett inside of the skew for each item you gave me that i listed so that won't happen again but thank you very much for this lovely gift that means i have sold two things that brett has sent me as a kind of a congratulations on full time box and uh, again i'm so sorry that i forgot that you sent that to me Okay, so now I'm gonna share with you what sold for the first week of March, and we're actually going to start, start. We're gonna start. We're gonna start with Poshmark first, and I actually made three sales for this week. Poshmark has two different features. It now has the bulk sharing feature, which you still have to click on each individual item you wanna share, but it does make things a little bit easier. No, I do not use a bot. Yes, I do know that there are plenty of resellers that use bots. I'm really bad at cross-listing right now, no, I do not want to use a cross-listing service. So I'll just do it on my own pace. Um, so I use both the bulk sharing and for the first time use the bulk offer feature as well where you just kind of send everyone an offer that has liked your stuff and I do that once a week now. And it worked and that's how I made all of the sales for this week on Poshmark. So this was one of the items from the collab I did with Amber, Josh, and Matt. Uh, it's a Columbia 2XL PFG long sleeve button front. Uh, it sold for $16 on Poshmark, but I'm really glad that uh, Poshmark has woken back up. This item I had for two years, I thought it would sell so much quicker than it did. I actually think I've had this for a little bit longer than two years, but this is a dead Scott, dead Scott, but this was a dead stock Irish coffee mug from, I believe the California Disneyland. I can never tell which one is which, like I get Disneyland and Disney World mixed up. One's in California, one's in Florida. It's all the mouse, so it doesn't really matter to me personally because I've never been to either, nor do I actually want to, which I know would probably take so many people aback, but it's not my thing. But this sold for $12, and I'm so happy that it has moved on to a new home, and they've already left me a five-star review. This is something I purchased for myself. This was just a simple... A-line skirt back when I was doing interviews for a job very, very long time ago. It's Express. Uh, I was more than happy to take $9 for it because this was something out of my old closet that I hadn't worn in like a decade. So very happy it's moved off to a new home. And now we're going to switch over. It's Moxie, you got to switch over on this side. Thank you to Etsy. I am sad to report that I have sold the last recipe soup mug in my inventory. Uh, so they are completely sold out. It is my best selling item. I do just have this one listing and uh, just keep adding to it as I find them. And I haven't found any in a while. So they are now currently sold out. But this sold for, I sold one clam chowder mug for $12. And then the buyer of course had to pay shipping as well on Etsy. So one of the things that I like selling that not a lot of resellers sell is ephemera. So ephemera is something that is made to be temporary or has like just a moment in time, kind of like movie tickets or posters, or in this case, magazines. I picked this up of a hoarder house for free and it sold for $15 on Etsy. And then of course the buyer had to pay shipping and tax. So I'm really happy that this has moved on to new home. So ephemera like this New Yorker magazine actually has several different things going for it. People that like to do junk journaling like to buy these old magazines to like make their journals look super cute. They're also great as movie props for period pieces as well and also as research. So if they're doing something, for example, this is from 1968, they're doing something from the late 60s, they wanna see what kind of things that people wore, what kind of people things were people interested in. Like it gives a lot of background detail as well. Plus, and 
for the New Yorker, it's actually published on a specific date. So sometimes people like to give them as birthday gifts to be like, on this day you were born, this is what was going on in the world. So it actually has several things going for it. Uh, I do actually have like another stack of these vintage like New Yorkers from the late 60s, early 70s that I just haven't listed yet. And it's, you know, it's in the death pile, but I'm happy that moved, this moved on to a new home. And you know, I made, <laughs> I made a nice amount of, of profit off of this because it was free. So now we're gonna move over to uh, the big entity, which is eBay. That's what I spend most of my time listing on. So uh, it's the one that is doing the best. And I had originally purchased this pair of green cottage core. They're like these cute little white flowers on it for myself, but unfortunately my butt is way too big to have even have hoped to have fit into these. So I had to put it up for sale and it sold for $11 and the buyer paid for shipping. I'm glad it is going to go off to a new home. I am sad that my butt is never going to know the blessing of these shorts. This is something I picked up at an estate sale that I did not film. I did, however, share a little bit about it on my Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram and you want to see more of me and the th things that I find, uh, I don't always get around to filming hauls for stuff. So that would be a good place to look, but it's just an Adidas short sleeve polo for golf for women and a size large sold it for my full asking price of $12.87 and they paid for shipping. This is something that was from the collab from Matt, Josh, and Amber as say Peter Millar quarter zip. It sold for my full asking price of $29.87. This did have a, a, golf, a, golf, a golf club crest on it. Again, I just disclosed what golf club it is if I can figure it out and put that on there and it, it sometimes doesn't matter. <laughs> but this actually did sell to someone in Virginia. So I think that they were actually looking for that specific golf club. So it can also add value as well. These are two ties that I learned a valuable lesson from. I do love to buy and sell ties. I do it all the time. It's not for everybody. It is for me. The reason why I said I learned a lesson from this is that they had asked me a question about it and I had answered it with the assumption that the person asking the question was in the United States and that bit me in the butt and also was a great example of why you should never assume things uh, for the lovely acronym that I'm sure everybody knows. And if you don't know it, someone in the comments will probably uh, illuminate it for you. But because of that, I did refund them $8 for the domestic shipping because the international shipping was just insane, uh, insane according to them. And I just, whatever. I already had agreed to something and I just was going by my word and they've delivered. They've not left me any feedback. I just don't want to see them again. So uh, I definitely will ask in the future when they have a question about combining shipping or asking about shipping, I am just going to be like, are you in the United States or are you international before I proceed any further and would recommend maybe doing that yourself if you are part of the global shipping program. Speaking of people that uh, live outside the Continental 48, this uh, was an offer I accepted from a buyer and it's a pair of UFC shorts for, you know, being bro fighter dude. And um, they sent me an offer for $20. Uh, when I sent them after two days, they hadn't paid. When I sent them an invoice being like, hey, I'll ship this as soon as you pay for it. Uh, they sent me a message in Spanish that I deceived them that they didn't get a discount at all. So I had to go to Google Translate and type to them that um, I did give you a discount. So these shorts are originally listed for $24.87 plus $4 for shipping. Uh, you sent me an offer of $20 plus $4 for shipping. So you got a discount of $4.87. The fact that it was still $24 and you had to pay tax was because shipping was $4. I didn't get a response from that, um, nor do I care to, but uh, depending on what feedback they give me, eBay for business on Facebook would take care of that for me. I just thought that was funny. Uh, pretty much my previous job, uh, you know, prior to 2021, I spent most of my day arguing math with people. So it is not a new concept to me and nor is it in any more of a pleasurable one. It's just 
I know not, math is hard for some people and that's okay, but please don't tell me I am deceiving you because I'm not. So this is a Columbia piece. I paid a, like less than a dollar for this at the Air Force Retiree's house. It's been sitting on this rack uh, in this eBay room as a death pile item for a year now. And it sold within a week of me listing it for $8 and the bar paid $5 for shipping. Again, perfectly happy with moving it quickly, uh, especially when I paid less than a dollar for it. REI Co-op is a brand that I will pick up most of the time I see it if I can get it for four dollars or less and REI co-op will have co-op on the tag. Um, REI makes a bunch of their own branded clothing just like Cabela's does just like you know Bass Pro Shops does but or Gander Mountain Hardware or whatever all of those outdoorsy type stores they all have their own house brands REI is the same however their co-op line uh, commands just and retains just a little bit more value. So those are normally the only ones I pick up, unless of course, you know, I'm getting it for $2 or less and then I pick up a lot of REI. But this was a hemp cotton blend. And for those of you that don't know, hemp and flax are both linen. It's just whatever plant they've decided to made out of it. If the item says which kind it's made out of, I normally disclose that, but it, it really doesn't matter. If it's linen, it could be hemp or flax. They both count as linen. This next item, uh, I don't, I don't know what it was with this first week of March, but I had like all of the issues. <laughs> but this had a nice resolution. So uh, this person sent me uh, a fifteen dollar offer, which I accepted. And then after I accepted it, they said that they wanted to ship it to a different address. <laughs> I said no, I'm not doing that. If you do not know, if you ship it to a different address from what they paid for it. Um, you lose all of your seller protections on eBay. So I automatically say, you know, eBay says we can't do that. I'm so sorry, I cannot do that. I'm more than happy to do one of two things for you. I can um, ship this to the address that is on your eBay account, or I can cancel this for you uh, outright, or I can cancel this for you and you can repurchase it with the corrected address. And she went back and forth with me a couple times as to which one she wanted to do until we finally landed on cancel this if you put relist it back at the $15 that I offered you I can buy it and choose which address I want it to send to so if you do that for me please please make it happen and I, I was like okay fine if, if it if she didn't buy it within like a couple of hours I was just gonna change it back to my original price because they either are going to do it immediately while they're talking to you or it's just not gonna happen fortunately it did happen so she bought it for $15 I got to ship it to her friend it was a gift so I was went the extra mile and even gift wrapped it for her uh, I haven't heard from her out nor her friend so I'm just hoping that this is done but I sold these I paid four dollars for it. I sold it for fifteen, and the buyer paid fifteen for shipping. That was a long-winded way to say I I made ten dollars. <laughs> oh, what people will do for money, right? So I sold this fairy light. If you do not know, fairy lights are very in vogue right now for the whole cottage core aesthetic vibe type deal. Plus, you know, fairy lights were very popular in the '70s, which is also super popular right now. Uh, what's funny is that I saw an Instagram post with with this particular fairy light front and center of like look at my pretty pink fairy lights and I was like I should have held on to it I probably would have got more money but I sold it for ten dollars and the buyer paid ten dollars for shipping very happy that both of those sold and I paid two dollars for each fairy light so happy about that a good profitable item for me is this Easton press book I do love selling books I I, I definitely love collecting and reading books and I found this for a dollar at an estate sale and it sold for my full asking price of $19.87 and the buyer paid $5 for media mail shipping. When I had this offer come through for this snuff bottle, I did a little dance because I have had this snuff bottle for three years and uh, I almost had a heart attack because I thought I had uh, either re-donated re it or just lost it in the swath of stuff I have, but I did find it. I forgot that I took all of my duck bottles and decided to decorate my house uh, with some dried lavender. So I had to take the dried lavender out of this and ship it off to the buyer. 
but they sent me an offer of ten dollars for this bottle and paid four dollars for shipping i bought this for two dollars three years ago this is a brand new leather bound devotional bible that i found at goodwill for a dollar it sold for my full asking price of nine dollars and 87 cents and the buyer paid for shipping this Viella piece, as I mentioned in my collab with Matt, Amber, and Josh, this shirt in particular was part of that collab, uh, sold for $19.90, and the buyer paid padded flat rate for shipping. If I can find the wool blend Viella shirts in flannel in good condition with no moth holes, I will buy them because they always sell. I actually originally heard Viella was a good brand from Josh, um, and then I've only found like a few pieces, but they've all sold very quickly for me and in this like $20 range. This is something I paid up for uh, two years ago. This is a Pendleton jacket, shirt jacket. I love that we have collectively as a reselling group decided to call it shackets now. I, I just enjoy saying that word. But I paid $12 for this. It was new with tags. Um, it's a vintage Pendleton suede leather piece. And I had a large petite and a medium petite. The large petite sold for quite a bit more money um, than this one did and, you know, quicker. But I did finally sell this for $31.90 and the buyer paid for shipping. This is another lesson learned that I need to be more careful about uh, the copy pasting. <laughs> so I like when I'm drafting things, I try to search on eBay, look at sold comps, and then draft my listing off of the highest available sold comp. And I did that for this item. This is one of the items that I listed from my dehoarding series for my kitchen. And I left the measurements in from the other listing and it was not the right measurements. And so when she got it, she was like, this is an inch smaller all the way around than what you said in your listing. And instead of getting an INATS, I was like, hey, well, you can either send it back for a full refund because this is 100% my fault. So I'll refund you the shipping and everything. I'll take care of it. Just you can send it back. Or if you still want to keep the item, I will give you half of the money back because it's half the size that it said on the listing. So she was like, we went back and forth about what card she paid for it because again, I was wary with the shipping international she was like will it go back on my mastercard and i'm like it's going to go back on whatever form of payment that you paid for it did you use more than one form of payment it was a whole big back and forth i hope it's a happy ending i haven't heard anything else from her she has received her 15 dollars back and i'm just going to move forward i broke completely even on this item so it is now not in my house anymore which is good and it had been in that cabinet for probably two or three years so whatever it's gone uh this is a dead stock item sold for my full asking price of eleven dollars and 87 cents and the buyer paid for shipping i got so many lowball offers off of this one shirt and i was just like for me if i'm getting a bunch of lowball offers then that means whatever this is is desirable and i'm just going to get a full price sale so i just decline or i counter offer my counter offer was always ten dollars i paid a dollar for this so it sold and I'm glad that it's gone. This is uh, a lesson learned that maybe the people on YouTube, the resellers on YouTube, uh, are not the end all be all of sourcing. A lot of reseller YouTube in early 2019 was talking about how these vintage handhelds sold for really great money. You should buy them. Like they're quick and easy fast flippers. So I bought this thing and it took two and a half years to sell and it sold at a price where I broke even on it. So uh, maybe I just didn't pick up the right one. This is literally the only one I have ever found in the last three years. It's finally out of my house and I already got good feedback on it. So I'm just glad it's gone. But yeah, uh, check comps for yourself. Even if I am able to sell something for a certain amount of money, doesn't mean you might be able to just because I like buying and selling something maybe that you don't find joy in doing that. So don't do it. <laughs> This is just an idea of the things that I like to buy and sell or just I'm grateful that they're out of my house and I, I hope this was helpful for you all. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Brett, again, I do apologize for uh, that mix up and uh, I will see you guys uh, in my next video. Bye. Bye. Also, this shirt is from that large vintage haul. I, uh, I might not get around to listing this one for a while because I really like it. Uh, but I will be releasing a short tomorrow 
with the first five that I dropped if you haven't already seen it on my Instagram. Okay, bye. Bye.